Hi everyone, uh, in this video I'm going to be going through limiting reactant problems. So some of you may have seen this before, some of you may not. Um, either way, we'll, we'll go through it very quickly here. So this video is assuming you're good with your naming, you're good with your writing equations, you're good with your stoichiometry, you're good with your grams to moles conversions. I've kind of pre-filled in a lot of that stuff just for the sake of time. Um, but obviously you need to know how to work through all of that from scratch. All right, so in this question it says a chemistry student burns a 67.4 gram sample of rubidium metal in the presence of oxygen. What mass of the product should form? Well, this is nothing new. You've seen this type of work. This is a normal stoichiometry problem. But what assumption are we making here? Notice I told you how much rubidium metal is there, and I said in the presence of oxygen. Well, unless I say otherwise, it means that there's enough oxygen to fully react that much rubidium. Now, the word you'll often see here is excess oxygen, but unless it explicitly says something, we assume it's going to be excess. Well, now we're not going to assume that anymore. So I'm actually going to reveal some extra text here. And this is the new add-on. So notice, I tell you how much rubidium you have. It's going to burn in the presence of however much oxygen we have, 5.60 grams. Now, whenever you're given both amounts of a reactant, you need to consider which is going to run out first and stop your reaction from occurring. That's called the limiting reactant because you're limited by how much of that one you have. Your excess reactant is the other one. It's going to be the one that you have more than enough of. So when it comes to solving something in the problem, like in this case, I'm looking for the mass of product, you have to base that off the limiting reactant, not the excess reactant. So how are we going to work this one out? Well, before you would just take your grams, turn them into moles, and then what I call run it through the grid, apply the stoichiometry. Well, now you just have to do this with both of them. You have to take this reactant and this reactant, turn them both into moles, and then you need to compare. So I have some molar masses worked out already just for the sake of time. So rubidium is 85.47. So I'm going to take my 67.4 times one mole over 80 just had it 85.47 or in other words you just divide and that gives me 0.789 now what I like to do is actually rewrite my coefficients right below it really makes them kind of pop all right now below these I'm going to write the moles that I have so I have 0.789 moles of rubidium and for the oxygen what's the molar mass of oxygen if you said 16, you're wrong. It's 32 when it's in the form of oxygen like this, O2. So yes, oxygen on the periodic table is 16.00, but if you have just oxygen gas, that's going to be 32.00. So 5.60 over 32 gives me 0 0.175. 0 0.175. So that's how many moles of each of my reactants I have. And then we need to know how much product we're going to get. So I put my X there. Now, you can't just pick your favorite reactant and use it. You can't just pick the one that gives you the easiest mole ratio. You have to find out which one's the limiting, and you have to go with that one. Now, if you heard me teach this before, if you saw my video, I used a slightly different method. Um, after speaking with the other chem teachers, we're all going to agree on a, a different method. Now, you're welcome to use that one if you already learned it. But the method we're going to teach now, it's very simple, very straightforward. All you do is this. You take the number of moles you have, divide it by the coefficient. And then here, you take the number of moles you have, divide it by the coefficient. Simple as that. And what you're doing is you're looking for which of those gives you the smaller number. And whatever get, you get the smaller number, that's your limiting reactant. Nice and easy. So in this case, I'm going to say 0.478. I don't know, I get that. 0.789, that's what I meant to say. 0.789 divided by the coefficient above it, which is 4, and I get 0.197. Now here, 0.175 divided by 1, obviously going to be 0.175. So which is bigger, the 0.197 that I got using my rubidium or the 0.175 that I got with my oxygen? Well, the 0.197 is bigger. I should have asked it this way. What's the smaller one? Because that's all that really matters. The oxygen gave us the smaller number. Therefore, we are limited by the oxygen. So because oxygen was the smaller number, above this, I'm going to write LR as my limiting reactant. And above this, I'm going to write ER as my excess reactant. Now, we have to solve for X. Which of these do we use? The limiting reactant only. 
So it's a one to two mole ratio. So you're going to double this, which is actually pretty easy. 0.175 times two, that's 0.350. So x equals 0 0.350. And what's the unit? Moles, not grams. And it's moles of Rb to oh. But we're not looking for moles. It asks for mass, and mass means grams. So we need to turn this into grams. Fortunately, I already did the molar masses. So 186.94 is the molar mass of rubidium oxide. By the way, so a common mistake people will make is they'll say, well, RB2, oh yeah, you do two RBs and one O, and that's what we get. But don't we have to double it because it's two RB2O? The answer is no. You do not apply a coefficient when you're getting a molar mass. We already applied that coefficient when we went from a one to two mole ratio and we doubled this number. You're not gonna apply it again. So you do RB2O 186.94, and we're gonna now multiply that. 0.350 times 180, I just lost it, 186.94. And with three sig figs, 65.4. 5.4 grams of Rb2O. Make sure if you're typing up your work, you use subscripts properly, superscripts properly. If you're using a Google Doc, do either control or command comma. So control comma or command comma. That's how you do a subscript. Um, for a superscript, it's period instead of comma. All right, so there's my first question. So again, the only new thing here is if you're given both reactants, meaning the amounts of this reactant and this reactant. You can't just pick your favorite. You have to find the limiting reactant. And to do that, you divide the moles you have by the coefficient, divide the moles you have by the coefficient, whichever of those gives you the smaller number, that's your limiting reactant. So I have a few more examples ready to go where I already wrote out a balanced equation and I already told you moles, assume these are moles already. So if you want, you can pause the video. Otherwise, find the LR. So I'm going to take my point 791 divided by 3, which gives me 0.264. I'm going to write that over here, 0.264. And here, I'm going to take my 0.508 divided by 2, which gives me 0 0.254. 0 0.254, which is a smaller number? This one, which makes that my LR. So above this, I'm going to write LR. And above this, I'm going to write ER. Okay. Let's do another example here. And you might want to pause. So identifying the LR. Well, 0 0.028, 0 0.103. You got to be careful with these numbers when we're dealing with small decimals. So this number divided by 1 is obviously just going to be the same number, 0 0.028. What about this one? 0 0.103 divided by 2 is going to be 0 0.0515. Right? Which number is smaller? This one. 0 0.02 is smaller than 0 0.05. Because this is a smaller number, that's my LR, which makes that my ER. And just like that, we're good. Now, of course, these problems aren't done. I would normally ask you something like, what mass of iodine forms, or I could say what mass of precipitate forms. So you would then take the LR and apply this in a two to one ratio. In this problem, you would take the LR and apply it in a one to one ratio. All right, one more warm up example. So this is the combustion of octane, which is a major component in gasoline, to 25, 16, 18. And again, we're assuming that you're good on your balancing, including combustion. All right, so I'm going to take my 12.8 divided by 2, which gives me 12.8 divided by 2, 6.4. And I'm going to take my 295 and divide it by 25, which gives me 11.8. Which of these numbers is smaller? This one, which makes this my LR, nice and easy which makes that my ER. And now if I ask you something like what's, um, you know, how much oxygen, or not oxygen, how much um, 
water is produced? Well, you would base it off your LR. You would apply a 2 to 18 ratio. So you would take this number and multiply it by 9, and that would give you moles. Okay, uh, let's do one more problem here. I already have the basic setup. Again, in this video, I'm assuming you know stoichiometry. You know how to do the naming and the balancing and all that. We're just going to get right to the limiting re excess reactant. So in this problem, we have a solution containing this many grams of copper 2 sulfate, this many grams of potassium phosphate. So because I gave you the amount of this one and the amount of this one, you have to find the limiting reactant. So first thing we're going to do is turn both of these into moles. I've already done the work on that. So I took the, this divided by the molar mass of CuSO4, and I divided this by the molar mass of K3PO4. So it's 1.84 and 1.30. 1.84. Oops. 1.30. Okay, why don't you pause, figure out the LR, and then unpause. All right, so this one, 1.84 divided by 3 gives me 0.613. So 0.613, I'll just remember that, 0.613. Because this I can do in my head. 1.30 divided by 2 is 0.65. So I have 0.61 and 0.65. The smaller number is this one, which means this is my LR, which makes that my ER. All right, so notice in the problem, letter A says, what mass of precipitate should form? Well, the precipitate is the solid product, which is my Cu3PO42 solid. So here's where my X is going to go. I don't, I didn't ask about this, so we can ignore that for now. If 159, oh, actually, we're not done yet. So we need to solve for X. Which of these do we use? We use the LR. You don't use this one because it would get you an erroneously high number. We're going to say point. A 1.84 divided by 3, which we actually already did. So it's going to be 0.613, and that's going to be x. Now, what unit is that? Moles. So x equals 0 0.613 moles of Cu3 PO4. But the problem doesn't ask for moles, it asks for mass. So we're going to take our molar mass of Cu3 PO4.2, which I've already gotten here, 380.58. I'm going to multiply 0.613 times 380.58, which gives me 233 with three sig figs. 233. Cu3PO4. All right, that's my answer for A. Letter B says if 159 grams of precipitate are collected, what's the percent yield? Well, percent yield is what you got divided by what you should have gotten, or it's your experimental yield divided by your theoretical yield. So we have numbers here. This 159, is that your theoretical or your experimental yield? Well, since it says that's how many grams were collected, that's your experimental yield. So we go 159 grams divided by your theoretical yield is how much you should get based on the math, 233. All right, so you look at those numbers, looks like about 60% or so. So 159 over 233 gives me this, and you're going to multiply that by 100. So sweep it twice, 0.682 becomes 68.2. And that is my percent yield. Um, part C, I'm going to do this in a separate video just so um, it can be a standalone um, for how to sketch it. But basically, the only thing you're adding to the sketch is that your excess reactant still has to be present in that third beaker. So you're going to have to add one of those aqueous ions. Okay. Um, make sure you let your chem teacher know if you have any questions about this, and we'd be glad to help you out.